Okay, so I just got done grading some more two-step stoichiometry problems, and I've seen a few common mistakes, including just not quite knowing what the vocabulary is and what a mole ratio is and what a molar mass does. So I'd like to address that in this video and help the people who haven't finished um, to get done with this worksheet. <clears throat> uh, first, uh, we have something called a mole ratio. So a mole ratio is a mole over a mole. The values for the mole ratio come from the balanced equation. And it's just a way of going, in this equation, every two hydrogens, I need one oxygen. And when I use that one oxygen, I'll make two waters. And that's what's happening here. What if I used four oxygens instead of one? How many waters would I make? Well, the ratio is one to two, and so I'd be making eight oxygens. So this thing called a mole ratio is just sort of comparing the pieces and going, well, if you started with four, you're going to end up with eight of something else. The other ratio we're using is how do you get out of moles and go to grams, where grams is something we can measure. Using the periodic table, uh, we're able to take the masses of the periodic table and put them together so that we know the mass of each mole in water. And we call that molar mass. So there are 18.02 grams every time I have one mole. But in this problem, we said, oh, we have eight moles. So, so we're going to multiply it out so we find out that we have 144 grams of water. So this is a way of changing moles into grams and is relying on the periodic table to give us the values. Algebra allows us to put those two together and dimensional analysis allows us to make sure that our unit plan is going to allow us to get to the right answer. So dimensional analysis allows us to look at the units and go, well, that's going to work. Um, so we have these three things and four, if you include the idea of the word coefficients that we use um, in these problems where we go from, for example, HF, we have two of them and we're going to water, but there's only one. So two moles of HF, will now lead to one mole of water. So we're going to do this problem. I'm going to enlarge it just a little bit more because um, I'm writing and my writing tends to fill the boxes quickly. All right, um, every problem has a given. And so in this case, the given is two moles of HF and every problem has an unknown, which in this case is grams of H2O. Now this is just like the example, um, but let's look at what's happening. We're changing moles into grams. We're changing HF into H2O. So we're gonna change the HF first into H2O. So, oops. So our two moles of HF will change into um, is going to change into H2O. So we're going to have moles of HF on the bottom. I'm going to have moles of H2O on top. And that is called my mole ratio. Okay, where do those numbers come from? They're coming from here. And so I'm going to have two moles of HF and one mole of H2O. What it means is if you use two moles of HF, you would make one mole of H2O. Algebra lets us continue to these calculations to find mass. Well, the mass calculation is something called molar mass. Molar mass is, um, we want grams on top. 
because we're following this idea of dimensional analysis that that value goes on top. And we're going to need moles of H2O on the bottom. So we're going to switch to moles of H2O. So the moles of H2O, we did also, we also did this up at the top, um, adding the two H's and the O, tell me how many grams there are in one mole. In one mole, there are 18.02 grams. Multiply across the top, we divide by the bottom, or if you prefer, we can cancel and end up with 18.02 grams. Okay, let's look at the mole roadmap really quick. Um, and, and I honestly mean really quick. So if this is too fast, I apologize. We're starting with moles of a substance. We are going to grams of another substance. To do that, we would have to change to moles of that other substance. So our first change is to get to moles of a new substance, H2O. And to do that, we needed to use coefficients, which we did when we did a mole ratio. The second step is to use molar mass. And we did that too, use molar mass in our second step. All right, let's practice another one. I'm gonna come down here. And so for these patterns, uh, we're starting with 2.1 moles of NaHCO3, which is the number in the problem. And we're going to grams of CO2. To do that, we'll first need a mole ratio, and that will change us, change the substance. And then we will need a molar mass, and that will change the units to grams. The beginning of the problem is the given dimensional analysis assures us that this will be on the bottom. We're switching so that grams of CO2 ends up being our answer. The grams of CO2 will come from the molar mass up here. And the other part is moles. So what do we do here? We change moles of NaHCO3 into moles of carbon dioxide. Those moles of carbon dioxide end up here. And the molar mass for this is one. This is 44.01. These are coefficients of the balanced equation. So we're going to use this one and this one. So we have two and two. And then um, we multiply across the top, divide by the middle. If you permit me, I'm just going to cancel those out. So that's basically 2.1 times 44.01. Hey Siri, what is 2.1 times 44.01? 2.1 times 44.01 is 92.421. Okay, so we end up with 92.4 grams of CO2. Okay, what happens if we start with grams? So we're going to examine the mole roadmap uh, a little bit. So if we start here this time with grams of our HF, 18 grams of HF, and we're going to, you barely see it up there, but it's moles of water. Oops, let's change colors. So we're going to not change to moles of HF. The A in this case is equal to HF. 
We're going to change it to something else. In this case, B is equal to H2O. So we're changing it to this. Again, it's two-step, but look, the, the um, molar mass and the mole ratio have changed spots. We're going to start by, we're going to start with the molar mass, and that will let me change my grams of HF into moles of HF. In this case, also, we know that the gram part is on the bottom because we know from dimensional analysis that these have to be opposite each other. And then we have, after the molar mass and changing it into moles, we'll need to change it to the moles of the substance we want, which we use the mole ratio for, which will change from moles of HF to moles of water. Again, it's barely visible here, uh, but that's a two and that's a one. Um, and this is 20.01 and this is 1. All right, so what we've done is if you start with grams, your first change is has to be to moles of the new substance. So the first change we're going to make is moles of this new substance. And the second change is to moles of my answer. So the first change is moles of HF, the second change is moles of my answer, and it also tells you which ones you want to do. I want to start with, let me just change a little bit here. I'm going to start with molar mass, which we did, and then we want to go to the coefficients of the balanced equation or the mole ratio. Okay, so that's how we do it. Oh, let's solve this. Hey Siri, this is 18 divided by 20 divided by 2. 18 divided by 20 divided by 2 is 0 0.45. Okay. I know I forgot the 0.01, but that's okay. All right, one more. Same thing here. What do we want to do at the beginning? We want to change to moles, so we're going to change, reduce that, uh, we're going to use my molar mass, notice that when I have mass or want mass, I use molar mass, and then the next step will be to use the mole ratio, again, I went too far, um, we want to calculate the moles of HCl, so the beginning, is 4.0 grams of CaOH2. Use molar mass. Oh, sorry about that. CaOH2. Change that to moles. That's what a molar mass does. We have one here. We have CaOH2 here. And we were given molar mass. To get this, we added a calcium to two oxygens and two hydrogens, because I have a pair of these two, and that gave me 74.1. And then the next step is to change that moles of calcium hydroxide to my moles of HCl, which is my answer. Um, using the coefficients again, they're barely visible, but there's a 2 in front of the HCl, and there's a no number or a 1 in front of that. And so that's how we solve that problem. Hey Siri, what is 8 divided by 74.1? 8 divided by 74.1 is about 0 0.1079. Um, and that's the end. Okay, so quickly uh, to summarize, 
If you're given grams, your job is to figure out how many moles that is using the molar mass. And so what we do is we have a ratio of grams per mole and we change the grams into moles. In this case, it's a fraction. Then using the balance equation, which gives us a relationship between the two substances, we have one CA for every two and HCLs, we're basically going to double the, H, the value that we got for CaOH because we need twice as many to tell you how many HCLs there are. And we go here. On the mole roadmap, um, oops, that all went away. On the mole roadmap, uh, sorry, I'm still struggling to figure out what I want to do. Uh, we have a given substance, which ends up being grams. We have an unknown substance, which happens to be moles of a new substance. Um, that will require two steps. Um, the first step will use molar mass to change to moles. And the second step arrow. <laughs> Uh, will require me to use the mole ratio. All right. So I don't. I hope that that was. I hope that was helpful. I hope you um, are able to see how you're supposed to use molar mass and mole ratio to make these two types of changes they're asking you to do on this worksheet. The two step stoichiometry problems. Thanks.